Good morning and welcome to our second movie. Belinda Lee, Ronald Lewis and David McCallum star in The Secret Place. Mum, I told you, Mike and I'd do that. Don't you worry about me. You run along to work. I'll manage. But you don't have to. We can do it this evening. I've heard that before. Ever since you've met that Jerry Carter, you've been out every night. Mum, not again, please. Well, you don't seem to care about me anymore. What's up? Mike, uh, can you mend my gramophone? I'll bust it again. Yeah, stick it in my room. I'll tell Jerry I'll meet him at Steve's place lunchtime. Okay. Bye, Mum. Can't stop. I'm late. Players, please. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Ready, be a dear. On your way back, nip into Cooper's and get me another one of these, will you? What's this? It's for you. For me. Go on, open it. Don't you like it? <laughs> yes, of course I do. 
But you shouldn't have done, Freddy. It must have been ever so expensive. No, it wasn't. I made it. You did? <laughs> it's lovely. It's just what I wanted, too. You must have second sight. No, I haven't. I heard you saying you needed another to wear with your black dress. You're a strange kid, aren't you? You better hurry up, as you'll be late for school. All right. See you tea time, then. Ounce of Dickens, please. And thanks. I'm sorry, Harry. I do a lot for you, but not this. What am I going to tell Jerry? Tell him to stick to selling cars. Morning, Harry. You're late. Yeah, I, uh, I missed the bus this morning. You missed the bus years ago. <laughs> he hasn't fallen through, has he? Oh, I see Steve's here. Do me a favor, mind your own business. Where's Jerry? Oh, Molly sent a message for him. Give it him later, he's busy right now. Now look, Jay, there's one there. There. Inside the door. There. And there. And if we make one false move, and someone gets suspicious, all they've got to do is reach out and push the switch. Okay, Steve, I get the idea. I want you to look at this and go on looking until you know it blindfold. How's this? Dad, Jerry, this is serious. Now, can't you understand, once we're inside, if we slip up, there's no way out. The second one of these things goes off, we're trapped. We can't afford even a small mistake. Why do you think I made this? Oh, you like doing it, Steve. You got a kick out of paper like I got a kick out of the real thing. It's always different when you get there. Sorry, Steve. Now, tell me what I missed out. It's the only way to find out the snacks. Right, here we go. Come into the outer office. Mm-hmm. She shows us into the waiting room. Right. We follow. Yeah. I close the door after the girl. Oh, now, the girl. Look, we've got to make sure she goes back. Of course she goes. She meets her boyfriend for lunch every day at one o'clock. Yeah, women very often enjoy being unreliable. Oh, I'll take care of her. No, no. All we need is to get her to the desk. Well, Harry can phone her. Yeah, that's a good idea. Timing's going to be tricky. Yeah, wait a minute. Yeah, I think Charlie Mason can do it. Look, here's the phone booth. All right, you come straight to this window. Charlie sees you and rings. Back over here. You close the door behind her and we wait for Venner. Venner pulls back the shutter, sees me, opens up, and then... But this is what you've got to look out for, the alarm push. Get him clear of it. There's one in every room, Jerry. You've got to remember where they are. Well, you'll take care of that, Steve. You'll remember. Ah, come on, Harry. Meet Mr. Venner. Charlie Mason's just been round. Ah, good. No, it was, uh, he said to tell you he won't drive for us. What? Why? He said to tell you he only works with professionals. Okay, I never trusted Charlie anyway. We could try to get hold of Johnson. Yeah, do that. No, I've just been on the blower. He's inside and Palmer's out of town. Don't worry, Harry. I'll find someone. I'd rather it was you doing the looking, Steve. Why? Jerry's all right. He'll find someone. Anything wrong with it? There's a couple of them finished. I'll take this one. Oh, yeah, he was looking for someone to drive. Well, I could... Well, remember when those pokies was nosing around about that car? I didn't let you down, did I? No, you did all right. I could learn. See, I... I could work your way. 
Give me a try, Jerry. Doing anything dinner time? Huh? Come along to the turntable. Harry will tell you where. Thanks. business, aren't you? Well, let's say I don't work for the tax man. Okay, Jan. Put him in a box for him. Okay, Mr. Waring. Here, let's hear the Jimmy Parkinson disc. I can't stand here playing records for you all day. I'm not going to stand for it. Not like the boss in this outfit. Now look, Mike, get it straight. There's nothing personal in this. I got it straight, all right. You don't like Jerry working with no one but you. Hey, Jerry, we've got to have a professional driver. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it, Steve. What happened? Oh, he said we were up. I said it was too risky. So that's it, then. We're going through with this, Steve. What, without a uniform? Yes. The whole thing depends on it. That one split second when Venner opens the shutter and faces a policeman. So he finds a plainclothes man. No. Oh, man in a raincoat waving a little bit of car. Doesn't make the same impact. OK, so we've got to have a uniform. You're the brains, get one. By tomorrow? Yes. I could fix it. They said, Jerry, it'll take weeks. What did you say? I can get a copper's uniform. There's a kid I know. His father's a copper. One of your mob? No. Old Hayward's kid. Well, he could nip in easy and get a uniform when his dad was out. What's he like? Well, you've seen him, Jerry. He's the one that brings Molly a cup of tea. Would he do it? Of course he would. I'll get Molly to ask him. Molly? Yeah, he'd do anything for her. Why? Well, I don't know. He thinks the world of her. He's always hanging around her kiosk. Well, now, Jerry, don't bring him into it. Why not? Nothing's going to happen to him. We're not asking him to steal anything. We just want him to borrow his dad's uniform for a couple of hours, like Mike said. And when we make front page news? Look, once it's over, he won't be able to open his mouth without landing his father in it. So the poor kid has my chance, has he? You with me, Stephen? Yeah. What's Mike doing here? Mum gave me permission. Same as you. We want you to help us, Molly. Me? Yeah, we run into a bit of bad luck. Is it to do with? Yeah. But you know I wouldn't ask you to do anything risky. It's just something we want to borrow. Well, what is it? Uh, this kid that hangs around your kiosk. Freddy? Do you think you could get him to borrow one of his dad's uniforms for a couple of hours? For you? Do this for us, Molly. Why, it'll be ever so difficult. Nobody'll ever know where it came from. Yes, I know, but how could I ask him? Oh, Steve will think of something. We've got to have a uniform where everything's off. Everything. Wouldn't it be better to go to one of those costume hire places? Now, why do you think we were having one made? But... It's the first place they check on. Well, Freddie wouldn't mind. You keep out of this. Well? Uh, don't you want me to ask him? Today? All right, Jerry. I'll try. Good girl. Come on, let's eat. You go ahead and order. Molly, what do you think that boy's going to feel when he finds out you've cheated him? Oh, he's only a kid. He won't see it that way. You don't even know what it's all about, do you? And would you have done this for Jerry when you first met him? Before you fell in love with him, before you knew what we were doing? Would you? 
No. The minute you ask that kid, you're in it as deep as we are. But you want me to ask him, don't you? It's so easy to drift into things, Molly. It's so hard to get out again. Don't worry about me, Steve. I can look after myself. I hope so. I really hope so. Well, it's just something that two friends of mine want to borrow. I said I could get it from you. Your dad being a cop, he'd be just the right person. Oh, it's only for a joke, Freddy. Doesn't matter a lot to you. Yes, it does. I'd feel ever so bad letting them down. Thank you. Everything okay? Yes, tomorrow. Hang it up. There's a good boy. Thank you, Pat. Oh, well, Teddy's going to sit there, is he? Come on, what about you? Get it up there. Come on, there. Pick him up. Both sit up, and Teddy and you are both going to have some milk. Yes? Who's going to have it first? You or Teddy? Teddy first. I like tea best. I know, you do, but milk's good for you. Now, come on, drink milk. Oh, dear, I can't get him to drink his milk lately. Do you want to grow up and be a big, strong policeman like your daddy? Eh? No. Oh. He won't drink it. He wants tea like us. Freddie, don't talk with your mouth full. It's bad manners. You're not going to do that. Why can't you leave him alone? He's only a baby. <laughs> That. He's hardly eaten a thing. All right, come on. Then. Up you... I expect Molly Wilson's been giving him chocolates. Well, I wish she wouldn't. And another thing, Dennis, he shouldn't go trailing after her the way that he does. It's not right him seeing so much of that family of hers. You know, you will have to put a stop to it. You mothers, you always think your children are too good to mix with the rest of the world. Mm, you men always taking him by a pretty face. Not that I'd call her pretty, mind you. I think she <laughs> looks what she is. Common. Well, there's no need to go on about it. Oh, it's not anything, you know. You ought to have heard what Mrs. Harris was saying only this morning. I wouldn't believe everything that old cat tells you. Molly Wilson's a very good-natured girl. Everybody knows that they're a rotten lot, that family. Girl can't be any different. It's in the blood, Dennis. You can't get away from it. Well, she's no better than that father of hers. I wouldn't trust her one inch. You're not to say that. It's all lies. Freddie. Molly isn't what you said. She's the nicest person I've ever met. She's my best friend.
Nick, quiet. <laughs> Sherry, please tell me before we go in, who we're visiting. Do I know them? Don't worry, you like them. They're nice people. Go on, open it. Open the door. Except two bed, one bath and kitchen, all Mount Carmel's. This is the drawing room. Like it? Oh, Jerry, it's the most beautiful room I've ever seen. Oh, it's a wonderful blow for dancing on, too. Come and see the rest of it. Go on, it's not wet. Oh, it's lovely. Funny you being like this. At the kitchen sink and liking it. Disappointed? Surprised. This is the bedroom. Have second sight. I wanted to live in a place that was elegant. Where all the people are nice and beautifully dressed. No one comes home at night drunk, singing and shouting like they do in Gentry Street. Oh, I hate the sound of their voices. I never want to go back there anymore, Jerry. Never. You don't have to. Not now. Not ever. Too good. It's like being given too much. You think there's been a mistake and it was meant for someone else. This is our world, Molly. For keeps.
Steve. Found these last night. What you were saying about disguise. Thought they might attract attention. Good idea. How's the fit? Ah, it's okay. Just. But you haven't got to calm loose. How are we for time? If you want to know the time, ask a policeman. <laughs> Ten minutes to go. Turn the corner up. All right, Ellie. Anxious? Drop the tickets? Yes. Be ready to leave the minute Christian goes. Right. <laughs> okay, Mike. Right, the place is crawling with bogeys. They're coming this way. No, oh, hold it. Oh, it's okay.
you next Monday, then. Use your time. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, after you, sir. Oh, no, after you, officer. Terribly stupid of me. Morning. Can I help you? Uh, my name is Benford from Gray's Inn Road. This is Inspector Harvey from the yard. I'd like to see Mr. Venner. Have you an appointment? No, I'm afraid not. But would you let Mr. Venner know that we're here? Oh, well, uh, just a moment. Mr. Venner, there's a gentleman here to see you from Scotland Yard. Oh, yes, there's a constable with him. It's rather urgent. It's rather urgent. Yes, all right, I'll do that. Uh, would you come this way, please? Mr. Venner will be with you in a moment. Oh, thank you. Uh, would you mind seeing we're not disturbed? Oh, yes, of course. But I shouldn't think anyone will come at this time. Uh, thank you. Please don't let us keep you from the lunch. Oh, that's all right. I'm not going out to lunch today. Oh, you know, I do envy people like you having exciting work. Oh, it's only a job, just like any other. Get used to it. Oh, isn't that strange? 627. What a coincidence. That's the number of my uncle's car. Oh, that's my telephone. Excuse me a moment. Look, Terry, it's going wrong. We've got to call it off. No. We can't use this police gimmick twice. If we're back out now, it's finished. It's all right, Steve. Ah, good morning, sir. This is Inspector Harvey. I'd like to have a word with you. Yes, of course. Good morning, gentlemen. What can I do for you, Inspector? Mr. Venner. Uh, just a minute, Van Winkle. I wonder if you'd mind coming inside. I won't be a moment. It is perfect, Mr. Venner. Now it is perfect. Even you will admit. Bring it in and let's have a look. If necessary, I'll manage, Venner. You take care of Rip Van Winkle. Yes, an excellent piece of work. Thank you well, Mr. Venner. Beautiful. Really beautiful. He's one of the best cutters I've got. Been with me for years. But he is very temperamental. I have to keep him happy.
Here come Punk here, Chummy. Steve. Come on. Oh, well, I'm afraid I wouldn't know anything about it anyway. Oh, Mr. Venner can see you now. Oh, Mr. Venner's just gone into the workshop if you want him. Oh, thank you. Look, Mr. Christian, there's nothing wrong with them stones. They'll fetch your price. Uh, yes, indeed. But as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Brown, that handful has no value at all. No value? Why, they're twice as big as the others. And twice as valuable. Or twice as dangerous. They're too big. At least five different people have a detailed description of this stone. And by now, the police. All I could do with them is hang up my chandelier. So what do you expect us to do? Cut them in half? Well, why not? I'm sure Mr. Christian knows of a cutter. Uh, need arranging. In the meantime, I'll pay for these. No. Well, the agreed price, of course. No, Mr. Christian, it's a lot or nothing. We'll be ready to do business with you when you find us a cutter. Very well. Now I'll keep in touch with Mr. Brown. Goodbye, Mr. Carter. Let's keep our fingers crossed, shall we? Let's. Now, look, Paddy, he'll be here himself in half a minute. I should have known better than get mixed up with a bunch of amateurs. What did you say? You know the terms we agreed? You'll get your money. Ring Harry, he'll tell you when to collect it. Now, get out! <laughs> Not with my pockets empty. Do you think you'll find us a cutter? 
Well, if he doesn't, I've got contacts. Better put these in the safe, 23 large, 12 small. Oh, no, Jerry. This is a clearing station. And a clearing station's got to be kept clear. That's logic. Steve? Not his place or yours. If the bogies get onto anyone, it'll be you two. Yeah, he's right, Jerry. In a couple of hours, every police station in town will have our descriptions. I only think I wanted my share. I'll settle for three of them. <laughs> Molly. We'll stash them down at Molly's place. Here, yeah, you can't do that. Steve, get this uniform back to Molly right away. And drop Paddy off. Okay. Sure. Now I can breathe again. Molly, there's been a slight change of plan. Jerry and I won't be leaving town for a bit. Have you got it all right, Molly? Yes, of course I have. What? Huh? You're a real friend, aren't you, Freddy? Well, you better hurry up and take it home. Shall I come back later and fetch a cuppa? No, dear, I'm knocking off early today. Tell you what, why don't you pop over to my place later on? Tell me how you got off. Okay. Ten caps, please. I've only got twenty. Bad. Jerry, it ain't safe. Can't you see? They're watching the place. They must have told you. They find out I work for Harry, so they come up here. What the hell's the matter with you, you gibbering idiot? Go on, open. But Jerry, that man in the raincoat, it's a certainty he was a copper. Oh, for Pete's sake. How many men in raincoats you see every day? That's your room? Yeah. Now, come on. I want to be out of here before your mother gets back. That's another thing, Jerry. My mother. She goes poking her nose in all over the place. And she won't find these. It's him, Jerry. He's come back. Uh, it's next door. You shall recognize that you live here. Does this work? The gramophone? Does it work? Yeah, I fixed it. The... Quick, get the works back in. for sound. I love you, honest I do. I'd do simply anything for you, but you. I guess you must... Don't go, Jerry. Don't leave it here. I could work your way. Give me a try, Jerry. You always wanted to show me how smart you were. Now's your chance. Stay here and don't leave it. And relax. Act natural. I won't let you down, Jerry. You better not.
these for you. Oh, that's ever so sweet of you. Have you been waiting long? No, not very. Oh, sorry, Mike. I, I just want to see if you fix my gramophone. Your... Oh, the gramophone. Yeah, it's fixed. Thanks a lot. It's all yours, Freddie. I promised you you could have it one day, so here you are. He can't have it, Molly. Why on earth not? Well, I haven't finished with it yet. I thought you said you had. No. No, I... Uh, I've got to go over the spring again. Well, can't you fix it now? No. No, I can't. Well, I don't see why not. Freddie wouldn't mind waiting, would you? No. Oh, can't you? You see, I... I promised it to him, and I, I don't want him to be disappointed. Tell you what. I've only got to file down a bit of rough metal. You'd like to take it home right now, wouldn't you, kid? Yes. Well, uh, I'll pop over and get it back when I've got time to fix it. Hmm? To Freddie with love from Molly. Thanks, Molly. It's a smashing present. Well, the sooner you run along home, the sooner you can try it out, eh? about the gramophone? It's not yours? No, it's not mine. But the 60,000 quid's worth of diamonds inside it happened to be in my care. Mike, you must be out of your mind. What made you put them in my gramophone? That was Jerry's idea. How could you let me do it? Why? They're as safe as the Bank of England. Who's going to look for them in a copper's house? You know, Jerry will kill you when he finds out about this. Well, he doesn't have to know, does he? I can collect it any time Jerry wants it. Oh, that poor kid. Thanking us for it and... you plant that lot on him. How could you be such a fool? Getting him to pinch his dad's uniform was doing the kid a favor, I suppose. Johnny. I was just getting Johnny's milk. You know, I was talking to Mike and he, he said he thought he could fix your gramophone this evening. Oh, all right. Oh, Freddie, I feel ever so thirsty. Do you think you'd get me a glass of water? Okay. It's because of the uniform, isn't it? It wasn't for a joke like you said. It was for that. I've always said you told lies. No one will find out it was your dad's uniform. You told me a lie. You weren't ever my friend. You just pretended because my dad was a policeman. Oh, no, that isn't true.
Get out! Get out! Go away! Why don't you go away? Into you. Couldn't ask you for it back. What a couple of deadbeats. Clayton 4563. Now it's a Jerry Carter. Mr. Christian? Yes. Yes, that'll be okay. Tomorrow? Fine. Goodbye, Mr. Christian. That was Christian. Fabian of the yard, your brother. Has he found a cutter? Yeah, it's all fixed. Mike, first thing in the morning, you'll go over and get that gramophone back. Huh? But, but what if he's told his dad, Jerry? Well, supposing the, the boat... All right. I'll handle it. I'll let him have a lie in. If he isn't better by this evening, I'm going to take him round to the doctor. I don't think he's ill. I think he's fretting over something. His light was on very late last night. You should have gone in and asked him what's the matter. Well, I didn't like to. They're funny at that age. Funny? I suppose he's growing up. You never know what goes on in a child's heart, do you? Don't worry, dear. If it's anything important, we'll find a way to help him. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye, dear. Don't be late like for lunch. All right, bye-bye. Haywood? Yes? I'm sorry to disturb you, but I promised Mike Wilson I'd call in for his sister's gramophone. Oh, dear. I thought Molly had given it to our Freddy. Oh, yes, of course she did, only Mike hadn't quite finished repairing it. Oh, I see. Oh. Oh. Freddy! Yes, Mum? Freddy, come down here a minute, dear, and bring your gramophone with you. This gentleman's going to take it away to have it mended for you. I'm not going to give it to him. I expect he doesn't want to be parted from it. I'll bring it back this evening for sure. But the way it is now, it might conk out any minute. And then you'd be sorry. You go back there and bring that gramophone down at once. Dear, it's getting moody. I'm so sorry. Come inside and have a cup of tea.
No, thanks, Mum. Where is it? Are you upstairs? I'm not going to tell you. Go up and get them. No. Don't think you can get away with this. Do you know what would happen if anybody found out you got them? Your dad would be in real trouble. And Molly. You hadn't thought of that, had you? your lovely gramophone. I dropped it. Dropped it? I wouldn't take much to smash this. I expect Mike will be able to fix it okay. You sure you won't stop and have a cup of tea? Oh, I am sorry, but I must be getting along now. I remember one word out of you and your dad will be in it. Up to his neck. Oh, goodbye. Well, I do hope he will be able to fix that all right. Oh, yeah, it'll be all right. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Edward. Okay, so far. That's a matter of opinion. I got here as quick as I could, Jerry. Where's Steve? He wasn't there. Harry's trying to find him. We'll don't live between us, won't we? The diamonds are in there. So's the kid. We've got to get him. No. We'll have to watch the place. You go around the back, Mike. gone shopping. Thanks. You stay here, I'm gonna get Steve. No, I can't wait any longer, Harry. You'll have to tell him. Well, you tell him yourself. I like to keep out of other people's business. Oh, right. Well, I... Oh, thank God you're here. Harry told you? Mm-hmm. Well, Mike's a dead loss. I can't trust Patty. Have to be you and me. I can't do it, Jerry. I'm 
Sorry, Jerry. Still a few things I draw the line at. You didn't think of saying that before, did you? We should never have used the boy in the first place. Oh, so now when you have to dirty your lily white hands, now you start drawing That's lines. That's not very fair, Jerry. What you don't see, you don't mind. Oh, yes, you want the reward, same as the rest of us. But you want somebody else to do the dirty work. I've always stood by you. This time it happens to be a little different. Yes, this time it's gone wrong. That's not why I'm leaving. You know it. All I know is you're ratting on me. Stick with me, Steve. We'll work it the way you want. It's just what you won't do, Jerry. Quit now and you quit for good. All right. I quit. Take that, Jerry. Shut up! Let's have another look. Oh, is this is my mum's engagement ring. Well, for all sake, you do that, that's all I've got. Father's just gone in. And the kid? Still in there. How's Freddy? Oh, he's been ever so strange. You know that gramophone, the one that Molly Wilson gave him that he was so pleased with? Mm-hmm. Well, it's smashed to pieces. No. He says he dropped it. I don't believe one word of it. Dinner will be ready soon. Here. Couldn't you go out and have a little chat? You know, try and find out what it's all about. Yeah. You coming down? I'm not hungry, Dad. That's all right. Can I come in? Yes. These last couple of days, Freddy, you've been acting like there was something worrying you. I don't want to pry or ask a lot of questions. It's just that if there's something on your mind that's making you unhappy, if you'd like to tell me about it, you might find it wasn't anything important. It's all right, Dad. There's nothing the matter. I don't think that's quite true. Don't you trust me, Freddy? Yes, Dad, I do. Then if you could trust me enough to tell me about it. There's nothing to tell. Thanks, Dad. about Freddy. Something's been happening these last few days has upset him. I thought maybe you might be able to throw some light on the matter. Well, he's always talking about you. I thought maybe you might have some idea. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Awood. He hasn't told me anything. Well, uh... 
Well, next time you have a chat, if he should say anything which strikes you as, um... Well, if only you could try and get him to confide. You and Mrs. Hayward couldn't Oh, have... I think he might find it easier talking to you. You see, he told us that you were his best friend. It's worth it. Yeah. Where'd you get it? In the Oskins. Oh. Come on, mate. Ta. Hello. We can't miss a chance like this. But, Jay, you didn't mean me to go to his house. Oh, who cares what he meant? Well, what am I going to say to him? Pull your old pals act. Molly, you've got to do it. Okay. Uh, don't come back here. I'll wait around the corner by the bridge. All right. A bit dodgy? Mr. Hayward asked you? Yes, he did. You see, he said that... Well, I mean, I thought you and Mr. Hayward must have... You better come inside. I thought I'd just pop round because Mr. Hayward seems so worried. Well, we both are, but really I... I bought him these sweets. I thought they might cheer him up a bit. I thought if I gave them to him myself, I, I might be able to get him to talk. Here's a visitor to see you, Freddy. What did you come here for? Freddy, last night I didn't know about the gramophone. Of course you knew about it. That's why you gave it to me. No, I didn't. You've got to believe me. Look, why do you think I came over afterwards? I came to get it back. What are you going to do? I don't know. Why don't you give them back to us? That's why you came here. No. Please, Freddy. No. I'm going to give them back to Mr. Venner. No, you can't do that. We'd all be caught. No. I'm going to give them back so he won't know where they came from. But why? He doesn't care if he gets them back or not. He'll get the insurance money. Well, the way we looked at it, nobody would suffer and we'd be a lot better off. You and Jerry. Yeah, me and Jerry. Oh, if only you weren't so young. How can a kid like you understand? Look, please, Freddy. Please be my friend just this once more. You're going to give them to me? Don't you like me at all, Freddy? No. I hate you. Didn't you pull your old pals act? Yes, I did. It has never been an act, Jerry. I've always been fond of him. Oh. oh Jerry, that kid really loved me. What? He loved me. And I just... Oh, what did Steve call it? I, I just... Steve? What's he been saying? You didn't listen to him, did you? Steve's just a... He doesn't even know his own mind. Molly, whose side are you on? You're not walking out on me, are you? No, Jerry, I'm with you. Well, then snap out of it. In that house, there are... 
There are 60,000 quid's worth of diamonds. What's he gonna do with them? Well? He said he was gonna give them back to Venner. What are you gonna do? The little swine wouldn't give them to her when I get my hands on that. So what is he gonna do then? He thinks he's taking them back to Venner. Does he now? <laughs> Wait till it's dark. Mr. Benner, I am going to hide your diamonds in the old tower in Gentry Street. You will find them. <laughs> Do you want to buy this? Well, well, what have we here? One of the crown jewels? You could fix it into a ring. It's nice of the dirty old things you've got. How much you give me? It's got a good shine to it. Tell me, where have you found this stone? I bought it from a girl I know. I gave her one of three. Young lady, I think it's best you should come along with me. Alf? Why? Come on. Well, now, you say you bought it from your friend, who bought it from another girl. But none of you know where it came from. That's right. What's your friend's name? Rosie Thompson. Where'd she live? 31 Brain Street. 31 Brain. Well, thanks very much, Mrs. Thompson. Your daughter was a great help to us. Oh, go on, dear. Tell him who gave you the diamond. Oh, go on, dear. What we want to know is, who did you buy it from? Won't you give me a tell you? He's in no hurry. Why should he be? Light's still on.
I'll check with Mike. You stay here. Hang on. Just gonna nip around the back for a second. the side entrance. How much is a half fare to a Newcastle, please? One pound and something saved me, single. instead. Driving in alone, son? No, my mother's waiting for me on the platform. about 14. What a ticket for you. something very wrong. If you find out, you will have to report it and Dad will get into trouble. So if I go away, you can't ask me about it. I've enough money until I get a job. So please don't worry. I'm sorry, I know I should not have done it. Now, Freddy. <laughs> not here either. And where are they? If you don't tell me, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill you. What were you doing by that old tower? Is that where you've hidden the diamonds? Was it inside the building? Which building was it? The one you were running out of. I found it. Here. And did you show it to your brother? No, I gave it to Susie. The railway police have just reported a boy answering Freddie's description at King's Cross. He booked a ticket for York but wasn't on the train. You'd better put out a district call. The cops are up at Hayward's place now. Our only chance is to get out while the going's good. 
where's Jerry? How do I know? You saw him last, but... When did you see him? Does he even know about the cops? Jerry can take care of himself. Will you come in? No, I'm going to find Jerry. I've got to find him and warn him. You're crazy. Love crazy. Do you think he won't ditch you? That hole there. Back up and keep the engine running. Come on.
Jerry! Come back! The police are up at Hayward! The police? Who cares? It's too late to change things now. No, it isn't. Come on, Molly! Molly, there's your chance. What are you waiting for? Molly, are you crazy? Still up there? Yes, sir, three of them. You three get round the back. Terry on the left, Smith on the right. Spread out in the entrance and then move in. Oh, please let him go, Jerry. But there's still time for us to get away. Will you catch the night train? They wouldn't find it. Oh, Jerry, we'll be together. We'll have each other. That's all that happens. Jerry! Thank you. I hope you'll be happy with your new boyfriend. Thanks, Molly. 